Welcome to Radio Baladi, the first Arab, Middle Eastern, and American simulcast radio show. Radio Baladi is broadcast every Friday morning on WNZK 690 AM from 8 until 9 Eastern Time on Good Morning Michigan with Layla Al Husseini. Our call in number 248 557 3300. And now, stay tuned for the best radio talk show on Arab and American issues with your host, Layla Al Husseini. <laughs> Dr. Sahar Tamid. Join me on the third Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be discussing some of the most important current political, economic, and social issues in my program, The Bridge. On Radio Baladi, on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNDK 690 AM and WGNV 700 AM. Good morning, everybody. This is your host, Dr. Sahar Kamis, Assistant Professor in the Department of Communication at the University of Maryland College Park and an expert on Arab and Muslim media. We're discussing today a very important topic. United Against Hate Speech, Voices from the Interfaith Community. Hate speech has been a serious epidemic, threatening social cohesion, national solidarity, and religious harmony in many parts of the world, including in the United States. Recently, a group of interfaith community activists representing different religious groups and denominations decided to take action, collective action, against it through organizing an inspirational and successful press conference in Rockville, Maryland, to protest the anti-Muslim hate ads, which have been placed on some buses in the Washington, D.C. area by Pamela Geller and her group. Three distinguished religious leaders from the Jewish, Christian, and Muslim faith are joining us today to discuss how and why they got actively involved in combating all forms of hatred, prejudice, and discrimination, and promoting interfaith dialogue tolerance, and coexistence. They will shed light on what constitutes hate speech, why it can be a serious problem, what could be done in order to fight it, and why it's important to have different members of faith communities express solidarity by joining hands and standing up for and with each other in the fight against hate speech. My first distinguished guest today is Reverend Abby Janamanshi, who serves as a senior minister at Cedar Lane Unitarian Universalist Church in Patesda. He was born and raised in southern India and is a third-generation member of the Brahmo Samaj, a Unitarian Hindu religious movement with strong spiritual ties to Unitarian Universalism. He has been actively involved in interfaith activities for over two decades, including serving as president of the International Association for Religious Freedom, the world's oldest interfaith organization. He has, he has a bachelor's degree in physics from Andhra University in India and has completed graduate work in quantum mechanics and solid state physics uh, at the same university. He has a master's degree in divinity from Midville Lombard Theological School in Chicago and he uh, has been actively involved in interfaith work for a long time. Before joining Cedar Lane in August 2013, he served for 14 years as senior minister at the Unitarian Universalist Congregation in Clearwater, Florida. My second distinguished guest is Rabbi David Schneer, who is on the executive committee of the Faith, Communi of the Faith Community Working Group of Montgomery County. He is the founder and director of Amkalel Jewish Renewal Community. He studied at the Jewish Theological Seminary and in Israel, in addition to earning degrees in Judaic studies from Rogers University and Baltimore Hebrew College. Rabbi David is the past president of OHALA, the Rabbinic Association of Jewish Renewal Rabbis. 
He is also an accomplished musician, a founder of Jews United for Justice, and an active member in the Chesapeake Climate Action Network and Rabbis for Human Rights. He is the founder of Yasha, the Jewish Housing Development Organization, and a former officer of Mana Food Center. Rabbi David is also the spiritual leader of Kahela Chadaza, a Havora Fellowship community based in Bethesda, Maryland. My third distinguished guest is Imam Haytham Yunus, who is a Muslim teacher, lecturer, and Imam who has been involved in Islamic education for many years. He studied Arabic and Islamic studies at the Islamic University of Medina in Saudi Arabia, where he resided from 1990 till 2002. Imam Haysan exhibits a keen ability to communicate information about Islam in a clear and enjoyable manner to American audiences. Since returning to his native country, the United States, he has been busy teaching, lecturing at schools and houses of worship counseling prison inmates and others, delivering Friday sermons, and leading congregational prayers in the greater Washington, D.C. area. Imam Haysan is also the co-founder of JID, the Jewish Islamic Dialogue Society in the Washington, D.C. area, an organization dedicated to bringing together Jews and Muslims in order to help them gain better understanding of each other's religions and to help them to promote justice and work for peace in the world. Welcome to the show, everybody, and thank you very much for joining my program today. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank Good you. Morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I would like uh, to ask each one of you to briefly give us a definition of what constitutes hate speech from your own perspective. Just one or two sentences to describe what is considered to be hate speech. I'll start with Rabbi David, please. Uh, first of all, good morning. Sabah uh, <laughs> There's a term in uh, in Hebrew. It's called uh, lashon hara, um, the evil tongue or the misuse of language. Um, it's uh, uh, the overall term for for hateful speech, for slander, for gossip. Um, what constitutes um, a hate hateful speech um, is uh, any any anything that we say or that represents what we uh, believe as an ad, because ads represent, um, it's a form of speech, um, that, uh, that are harmful to others, that incite prejudice, that can incite um, violence, that can create a, 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 a disharmony in a, in a community. That's, that's one way that I can understand that. There are some... Mm -hmm. 31 uh, teachings in our Torah that uh, address this very serious problem. Mm -hmm. um, it's considered um, extraordinarily um, uh, wrong to, uh, to slander others and to, and to speak harmfully of others, uh, either as individuals or as a group. Excellent. Thank you so much. And Reverend Abby, if I may ask you the same question, how do you understand or define the concept of hate speech? Uh, sure, and again, uh, good morning, and uh, thank you for inviting me to be on your show. Uh, thank you for being here. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Uh, I, I pretty much, uh, you know, uh, Rabbi David uh, uh, encapsulated uh, uh, what hate speech uh, means, um, and and uh, the, the thing I would add to what he said is, uh, I, I feel hate speech consists of. Uh, uh, both verbal and nonverbal expressions uh, that are used uh, to to demean, oppress, uh, or or promote violence against others uh, uh, on the basis of their ethnic identity, their social identity, or, or religious uh, beliefs, and and it involves, you know, to me it's more than just uh, yelling out uh, uh, a bad word or a slur against someone in anger. It is uh, it's more than just uh, teasing someone, uh, but it's uh, more a way in which people, uh, usually part of a majority, uh, direct messages that are intended to hurt, harm mm -hmm. uh, others, uh, especially people from a minority. Uh, and, and they're also designed to degrade and uh, harm uh, people for the same reason. Uh, so examples are, uh, you know, uh, 
anti-Semitic uh, symbols uh, spray painted on on synagogues. That uh, you know we've had situations here in Montgomery County recently. Yes. Uh, ethnic slurs or derogatory labels for a group. Uh, you know, burning a cross in someone's yard. Um, racist cartoons. Uh, sexist statements, uh, homophobic protest signs and chants, all these to me constitute hate speech. Thank you so much. And Salam Alaikum, Imam Haysam, if you can also uh, tell us your own definition of hate speech, please. Wa Alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, um, well, I think that the way I understand it is that it's a blanket statement about the mindset, if you will, of an entire group of people. And with respect to these days, what's going on with Islamophobic statements, um, it seems to be a kind of thrust to put in mi- the minds of people that that Muslims are, uh, you know, geared to a certain agenda, and that they are all unified in this agenda. One of the most insidious things is the uh, the references to um, uh, Tokyo, which is uh, Takia, which is hiding, um, and and it's a misinterpreted concept. But anyway, it's you know hate speech uh, throughout the ages has all had basically the same uh, the same goal, which is to to lump a group of people into a category of being you know uh, united in, in some kind of insidious thing to dehumanize them, um, and there's always some political agenda behind that as well. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's what I would say. Yes, and actually, thank you for mentioning the political agenda, because, you know, Jews and Muslims in particular have been subject to a lot of of hate acts and hate speech uh, in many parts of the world. But in our own area here, in the Washington, D.C. area, in Montgomery County, we have seen some disturbing incidents and and events that really took place uh, lately. Again, uh, you know, these two particular communities, uh, anti-Semitic acts uh, or anti-Jewish acts, uh, uh, you know, uh, as well as anti-Muslim, of course, acts that have been taking place also, including the uh, anti-Muslim bus ads that we have been uh, mentioning at the beginning of the program. I want to know two things here. What triggers these kinds of acts, you know, against, against minority groups like Jews and Muslims uh, in a country like U.S., what would make someone go out and commit these kinds of, of acts, and what could really be done in order to fight it? I'll start with, Dave, with uh, Rabbi David, please. Well, it's uh, uh, not an easy question to, to answer. Uh, I think the... Uh, I think fear has a lot to do of, uh, with um, with this kind of approach t- to others. Uh, fear, uh, insecurity, um, uh, family history. I understand that um, the, the woman who um, was responsible for the ads, um, the anti-Muslim ads, mm-hmm. I understand that her parents uh, uh, were survivors of the Holocaust. Mm-hmm. Um, so sometimes uh, it, it's, I mean, many times or very often it's, it's fear, it's insecurity, it's um, um, a lack of um, um, maybe education, mm-hmm. uh, it's a lack of uh, getting to know and, 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 and being in conversation with the other. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this too often is, is at the core of the problem where, you know, we're not, you know, just talking to those who we think uh, are against us. Um, so whenever we can engage in a in a conversation, you know, with with the other in 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 dialogue, in meetings, and 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 you know this kind of effort, uh, we can reduce that level of of fear and insecurity significantly. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you put a face, you know, on those who you think hate you, uh, and and you look into each other's eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, and you hear each other's stories, that's transformative. And mm-hmm. I think, sadly, that the people who perpetrate uh, such hate um, hate statements and ads and, and, and books and whatever are people who haven't had those kinds of experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a very important point, the, the value of education and the value of dialogue, which makes me ask you, Imam Haysam, about the uh, foundation of JIDS. You were one of the co-founders of JIDS, the Jewish Islamic Dialogue Society, 
uh, of Washington, D.C. Um, you know, we're going to take a commercial break in one minute, but after we come back from this break, I'd like to hear from you about what really uh, triggered the uh, formation or foundation of JEDS and why it's important in fighting these different forms of hate acts and hate speech. Uh, stay tuned with us. We'll be back right after this commercial break. Betsy's Bridal and Formal, Michigan's largest selection of special occasion dresses. Exclusive bridal and cocktail fashions for formal engagements, proms, showers, pageants, mother of the bride and groom, and full bridal wear. Sizes 6 through 30. Betsy's has over 33 years in the bridal business. We promise you the best quality service and alterations. Betsy's Bridal and Formal is located at 6189 Haggerty Road in West Bloomfield. Call 248 669 Nine 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 nine. That's two four eight six six nine 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 nine. New concept product and design. رائدة إعداد وتجهيز المطاعم والمطابخ بالمعدات بشكل كامل غرف التبريد والثلاجات يمكننا مساعدتكم في الحصول على التمويل اللازم لمشروعكم وكذا الحصول على الإجازات اللازمة من الدوائر الصحية نخدمكم بخبرة 25 عاما ناجي عبود صديقكم الدائم للاتصال الهاتف رقم 248-442-9292 248-442-9292 9292 وتماما على 33900 West 8 Mile Farmington Hill للمزيد من التفاصيل زيارة الموقع الإلكتروني www.nuconceptproducts.com This is Dr. Sahar Tamid Join me on the third Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time be discussing some of the most important current political, economic, and social issues in my program, The Bridge, on Radio Baladi, on America's Voice of the Arab, WNDK 690 AM, and WGNV 700 AM. Welcome back, everyone. Right before going to the commercial break, we were talking about what triggers hate speech and what would be the best ways to fight it. Uh, Rabbi David Schneer mentioned the importance of education and the importance of having dialogue with others. And my question to Imam Haysam Yunus is about the foundation of JID, the Jewish Islamic Dialogue Society. What triggered the formation of this particular group and how can it contribute to fighting these forms of hate acts and hate speech? Well, it happened to be that uh, someone who had written a book um, called Moses the Heretic, my co-founder Dan Spiro, um, developed a fascination with Islam through his, his research and studies. And on the other hand, myself, I've always had a fascination, if you will, with, with Judaism and, and Jewish culture, having been exposed to it. Um, even before I was exposed to Islam at a younger age. So we got together. But the foundation of JIDS, basically, and I want to say, by the way, that Dan does all the work. He is JIDS. I'm just a figurehead, really. Um, the foundation of JIDS is based on the premise, and this is a very well-known, understood premise to Muslims, that the, the Torah and the Quran come from the same source, the same God. And so, therefore, they have everything in common, a lot in common, in fact. Um, and if you consider Judaism and Islam as two different religions, yet they are the closest two different religions to each other. So based on that foundation, a scriptural foundation, a faith foundation, we said, let's get the two people together, let's get the groups together, and discover, you know, how close we really are as a, as a beginning, as a foundation for you know for better understanding and then we can address all the, the political issues that seem to you know muck everything up mm -hmm. absolutely and I also know that JIDS now has a social action committee that's under formation hopefully a uh, part of the agenda and the mission of this social action committee is to organize effective events and campaigns to counter different forms of hate acts and uh, hate speech Reverend Abby, you were one of the participants at the press conference which was held recently in Rockville, Maryland, in order to counter the anti-Muslim uh, hate ads. 
which were placed by Pamela Geller uh, in the area. And if you want to talk a little bit about the press conference, why you thought it's important to hold it, uh, what was really hoped for, and if you think it achieved its objectives. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, uh, the, the reason I uh, decided to participate was uh, uh, seeing an opportunity for the, the interfaith community in Montgomery County to stand together to, to make a statement uh, that, uh, that we stand together to promote love, not hate, mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, free speech uh, does not mean uh, uh, anything goes that uh, free speech also means free and responsible speech. And uh, many of us felt very strongly that the ads uh, violated that particular principle and, and uh, saw this as an opportunity for us uh, not only to, to be together, but, but to let the community know that while we respect uh, the, the legal uh, precedents and laws of our country, we also uh, lift up the, the moral and ethical precedents of all of our faith traditions, which teach us to respect one another, to work through our differences with love and, uh, with love and care, rather than uh, engage in, in, uh, in both speech and actions that are hurtful and, and violate uh, uh, the, the other person's uh, faith tradition or, or disrespect uh, their faith tradition. Mm -hmm. And I may also add here that, you know, not only the three uh, major Abrahamic, uh, you know, faith traditions, uh, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam were represented at this press conference. We've also seen members of other faith communities. There were, you know, Buddhist monks. There were people who were from Hindu background, from Sikh background, from Baha'i background. It was really like a whole get-together of solidarity mm -hmm. from different people from different faith communities, showing the world that they're standing hand in hand in order to combat hate speech. What is the value of this, you know, uh, collective action, if you will, in terms of promoting the message of, of solidarity and the message of unity, uh, Reverend Abby? Uh, it it uh, conveys many things. Uh, uh, you know, the, the thing that comes to mind is it was, it was a wonderful representation of the pluralistic fabric of our country uh, mm -hmm. and, and that Montgomery County... Uh, in many ways is is a great example of uh, of uh, uh, the multicultural pluralistic nation that the United States is uh, and uh, it it also emphasized uh, the the core principle of of interfaith dialogue and engagement, which is the free exchange of ideas uh, and and in that sense promoting uh, uh, both creativity and and uh, common work together, but also recognizing that that our differences uh, need not uh, be sources of division, but instead that our differences can actually unite us uh, for common purposes that concern us all. Absolutely, this is very well said. And on this note, I want to ask Rabbi David Schneer about this whole point about you know Jewish and Muslim relations. As you know, the bus ads try to send a negative message against Muslims and Islam. But part of the claim that this ad made was that the hate of Jews is something that is mentioned in the Quran, which is of course a false claim. And I want you to talk a little bit about the uh, importance of correcting these types of misperceptions as well as the best way to build strong Jewish-Muslim relations. You know, it is no secret that Jews and Muslims have been coexisting for centuries in many parts of the world, but there has been a negative spillover from political conflicts uh, that somehow affected this relationship. So can you talk a little bit about this, please? Sure. Um, I, uh, there's so much, actually, to, to address. Um, uh, here, I, uh, for years... Um, uh, and more so since 9-11, uh, there has been a concerted effort, uh, certainly in the Washington, D.C. area, um, to, to, to create bridges between uh, our different faiths and communities. Um, you know, uh, some 30 years ago, uh, there was essentially one organization in the Washington area devoted to interfaith work, and that was the Interfaith Conference of Greater Washington, D.C. Now there are more than... Uh, 20 to perhaps 25 or more um, organizations, interfaith organizations that uh, are, are addressing uh, these issues. Uh, with regard to the, you know, the statements, um, you know, uh, from the ad and 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 Jewish uh, Muslim 
um, uh, uh, what's the word? Um, tensions. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, there are there are people that will um, will want to exploit. Um, you know, uh, I, I, it's hard to express because I get, I, it comes from a place where, again, of tremendous insecurity and lack of knowledge and lack of um, awareness of, of of the other that 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 create this. Uh, I just like to read something from the statement um sure. you know the other day um that that really speaks to I think this question that you asked mm -hmm. um we stand the statement that we presented to the press yeah we stand united against all misinterpretations of the Quran as of all scripture that divide and misguide public sentiment toward prejudice and hatred we seek to understand the Quran and all sacred works and the enlightenment they offer. Um, so here we are part of an effort in the Washington, D.C. area, and it's, it's been growing and growing for years now. Uh, we only had the kind of turnout that we had the other day because of all the work that um, people of, 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 of good faith you know, put into making this happen. Um, there's much more that, that uh, connects us um, than, than divides us, and w that's why it, it was such an important, important effort, and why it needs to it needs to grow. Um, I'm not sure if I specifically answered your your question. Uh, I, no, I think it's a great answer. I think it's a great answer, and speaks volumes to what unites, you know, rather than divides different faith communities, you know, including Jews and Muslims. But maybe in the case of Jews and Muslims in particular, as I mentioned. There has been an unfortunate spillover from the political arena that somehow kind of troubled or, or created tension, as you mentioned, in the relationship between Jews and Muslims who have been otherwise coexisting for centuries in peace and harmony in many parts of the world. So I, I, you know, if you want to talk a little bit just more a little bit about this particular point, what could be yeah. done in order to rectify or overcome this major hurdle? Well, that's right. I mean, politics, you know, certainly um, influences how we feel about each other. And too often one's politics uh, would be read into, um, you know, into our sacred uh, texts. And we can, uh, you know, anyone can pull uh, what they want from their sacred uh, texts in order to support their political political views. Mm -hmm. um, this is something we need to work at. Uh, uh, and, and I know the work that I that I do personally in the community. I also direct a spiritual and ecumenical retreat center. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have to uh, find that um, that common thread, mm -hmm. um, whether it be uh, the common thread of compassion and love and and justice, uh, the common thread that we are all created in the divine image, um, and. Uh, we have to. We have no choice. And, and we have these problems within our own religious faith, too. I mean, not all Jews see eye to eye, and we mm -hmm. certainly know that not all Muslims and not all Christians mm -hmm. you know, see eye to eye on, on things, and we have to work much more intensely within our own traditions. There are Jews who are, who are terribly uh, racist. Mm -hmm. you know, and this is you know, contrary to... Um, my understanding and the understanding of my congregations and many Jews. And, mm -hmm. and we know this is also true within Islam and mm -hmm. within Christianity that um, there are so many of us who uh, you know, see the world differently. We cannot allow you know, the, um, the extremists, the bigots, the, uh, those who hold these prejudicial feelings mm -hmm. um, to uh, you know, t to to be the dominant voice, we mm -hmm. just cannot allow that. Um, mm -hmm. We have to, you know, we, we can't ban these ads, but we can counter them, you mm -hmm. know, with teachings, with dialogue, with, in our Sunday school, you know, we teach our kids, our, our high school kids, we have cor a course in comparative religion. We mm -hmm. take the kids to mosques and to temples, and we bring in speakers, we study the New Testament, um, you know, are we, that's how we do it. We mm -hmm. have to go into the public schools. We have to go into private schools. You know, if we want to create a society of peace and harmony and justice, then we have to be in dialogue 
with each other. We have to learn from each other, see each other, speak to each other. So uh, I, I, it's hard to say much. I've spoken too much. Yeah, no, I think I think you you made excellent points. And if I may just add something here, in addition to all the great work that you have been doing in the interfaith community, there is also your contribution through the artistic part. You know, uh, being also a, a musician and playing music. You were there at the event at the press conference with your guitar. You know, singing. You know, love your neighbor as thyself. And I think that sends a very important message, not just through words, but also through art and through music. So, By the way, on the arts. Um, for two years now, um, members of the uh, Abrahamic uh, family here in the Washington area have held a uh, Celebration in Harmony concert where um, we have um, a music arts presentation by the Islamic, uh, Christian, and Muslim, and Jewish uh, communities. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and we raise money uh, to address hunger needs in Montgomery County. And um, there's that event, there's the, uh, the Interfaith Conference of Greater Washington, D.C. has an annual interfaith uh, music event. You know, absolutely, music is a, a, a major way of bridging, um, bridging our traditions and bringing us closer together. Absolutely, and we'll continue this interesting conversation right after this commercial break. Stay tuned, please. If you get into a car accident, how will you pick up the pieces when you can't work, when the bills pile up? Who will help you? Call 866-YOUR-RIGHTS. I called Jemana. She took care of everything. My medical bills, lost wages, and even a large settlement. I am Jumana Kiruz, and I assure you that my team will not stop until you get the most for your rights. If you've been in a car accident, call Jumana. 866-YOUR-RIGHTS. Dr. Al Zuhaili specializes in diabetes and endocrinology and has been conducting research for over 12 years. Right now, there are several clinical studies actively enrolling for both adult and pediatric patients with type 2 diabetes. Under Dr. Al Zuhaili's care, participants in the clinical research trials receive free lab work, medical procedures, medical supplies, and medications to assist in their treatment. Qualified participants are also compensated for their time and travel in addition to receiving top care for their diabetes treatment and control. The research department is equipped with experienced and friendly staff who will work to manage patient care and schedule accommodations. Please contact Alzuhaley Medical Consultants at 1331 Monroe Street in Dearborn. Visit alzuhaleydiabetes.com and call 313-581-8903. 313-581-8903. Dr. Sahar Tamiz. Join me on the third Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'll be discussing some of the most important current political, economic, and social issues in my program, The Bridge. On Radio Balladie, on America's Voice of the Arabs. WNDK 690 AM and WGNV 700 AM. Welcome back, everybody. This is your host, Dr. Sahar Kamis, discussing an important topic this morning, United Against Hate Speech, Voices from the Interfaith Community. And with me this morning discussing this important topic are three distinguished leaders from three uh, Abrahamic faith traditions, Rabbi David Schneer, Reverend Abi Janamanchi and Imam Haytham Yunus. Imam Haytham, if I may ask you the important question. When it comes to uh, bigotry or hatred against Muslims, some Muslims prefer to take the position of just let it go, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, not do anything about it, in the hope that this is going to draw less attention to the incident of hate or bigotry uh, that has taken place. While other Muslims believe it's important to stand up and take action when such incidents of hate erupt. What is your own take on this issue? Well, my, my personal opinion is that it's never good to be silent, and I think that, you know, we, we learned that lesson in, in history, you know, when, what, with what happened to the Jews in the Holocaust. I think that there was a, uh, you know, there was a ramping up of propaganda year after year, year after year against the Jews, and Painting them, you know, in the, in the manner that they wanted to, to paint them, and people got to believe the, the the propaganda against them. And so, then, when it was time to, to to take action and do what they wanted to do, the people acquiesced. 
because they, they, they believed all the stereotypical things. So I think that being quiet is, is always a mistake. But one thing I wanted to mention is that um, too often people uh, assume that verses from the Qur'an themselves uh, are hate speech. And, and it becomes uh, tragic when Muslims themselves buy into this concept. You know, um, a superficial reading of verses in the Qur'an may be taken as hate speech, criticism that God levels, if you will, um, to, towards the people of the book. He also, by the way, levels criticism at, at Muslims who are not entirely sincere, hypocritical Muslims. So, but the, the vein, the manner in which it should be taken is, is very much like the manner in which uh, when God is critical of the believers in, in the Bible, it's the same kind of thing. He's criticizing the people, saying you can do better than this. And one who has a political agenda, as, as Rabbi David mentioned, you know, can, can pick and choose and, and, and emphasize what they want to emphasize. However, an objective reading of those passages would show that, in fact, there is a very balanced criticism, if you will. You know, the, the, in, the, in the scripture, the God is always saying um, those who have failed to do their job are under mm -hmm. his criticism. Those who have done their job, those who have been faithful and loyal to their scriptures, not the Islamic scriptures, but to their books, um, mm -hmm. are praised by God. And this, this is, you know, consistent throughout the Qur'an. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's human nature, perhaps, to take passages and mis uh, misinterpret them or, or to give them a certain twist, uh, you know, as your own inclination uh, dictates. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that. and I was a visiting professor recently at University of Chicago, and I heard an excellent lecture by a professor of Islamic studies talking about this particular point, about the misinterpretation of some of the uh, verses in the Holy Quran and taking them out of context, while in fact the Christians and Jews in particular, as Ahl al-Kitab or people of the book, have a very special uh, status in Islam and in the Quran. And as you said, you know, God's uh, reward or wrath uh, falls upon people depending on their actions and their deeds, not uh, for belonging to one group or, or another. However, after 9-11 in particular, unfortunately, we have seen a surge in a lot of hate speech and stereotyping and profiling of Islam and Muslims. Uh, you know, if you want to talk a little bit about this, and, you know, it seems to me it has been a double-edged sword as well. It raised, you know, some kind of bigotry and stereotyping of Muslims, but it also raised interest and awareness and, and the desire to know more about Islam and Muslims. Can you comment on this, Imam Haitham, please? Um, I'm sorry, some of the, the sound was cutting out a little bit. Um, specifically, you're saying about the, the Islamophobia these days? Yeah, especially after 9-11, we have seen a surge in bigotry and surge in, in uh, you know, hate speech against Islam and Muslims. But I was also saying it, it was a double-edged sword. On one hand, it raised bigotry and, and sometimes hatred, but on the other hand, it also raised interest in knowing more about Islam and Muslims. Would you agree with me on that? Yeah, certainly. You know, there's a saying of uh, Prophet Muhammad in which uh, two men had come from visiting a, a, a city, and one of them came in upon the Prophet, and he asked them, how did you find the city? And he said, oh, very nice, and the people are very kind and good. And he said, you have spoken the truth. The second man came in and he asked him, how did you find the city? And he said, oh, not so good. It's, you know, it's corrupt. There's corruption and people are not good there. And the prophet said to him, you've spoken to tr the truth to the other one as well. So someone who was sitting with him said, uh, oh, messenger of God, why did you say to each man that they had spoken the truth when each one had said something entirely different from the other? Mm -hmm. And the prophet said, well, everyone sees what their nature inclines them to see. So I think that from the the, the tragedy of 9/11, people, uh, you know, some people were inclined by their nature uh, mm -hmm. to ramp up the prejudice and to to uh, believe whatever negative things that they were told about Muslims. And I think that others became more curious to find mm -hmm. out the the truth. And of mm -hmm. course, again, we get back to this whole thing about you know painting people all with one brush stroke, making them look like there's some kind of monolithic block, mm -hmm. you know, like like all Muslims are, are automatons, you know, marching in step and chanting Sharia law, Sharia law, you know. It's like mm -hmm. we're all human beings. We're, we, we, we're so varied. We're so diverse. Mm -hmm. even, within, even within one particular sect, if you will, or group of Muslims, 
there are going to be divergence. There's going to be diverse opinions. Even within within a family of of, of believers, there's going to be divergence. There's going to be differences. So mm-hmm. I think that uh, you know basically the the danger is just making that assumption that you know uh, all Muslims are like this, all Jews are like this, all Christians are like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very dangerous. Absolutely. And Reverend Abby, I want you to shed some more light on your own uh, congregation or your own faith community, the group that you uh, belong to, and uh, you know what efforts have been done within your own congregation or faith group in order to take action and create a better interfaith dialogue, as well as combat or fight different forms of hate and hate speech. Uh, uh, yes, I would like to address that. Uh, uh, one thing I do want to go back to that uh, Rabbi David mentioned uh, about uh, about truth. Uh, you know, in the Hindu tradition, in the Rig Veda, there's a beautiful expression uh, in Sanskrit which goes, uh, ekam sat vipra bahuda vadhanti, which means uh, truth is one, mm-hmm. sages call it by different names. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, that has actually been the fundamental principle on which uh, many Hindus engage in, in uh, interfaith uh, work and dialogue. Uh, and, and in case of our Unitarian Universalist tradition, we have a long history of being involved in interfaith work. Uh, in fact, the Unitarians and the Universalists uh, were significant uh, leaders in the first uh, Parliament of World Religions that happened in Chicago in 1893. Uh, uh, the prime organizer, Jenkins Lloyd Jones, was a Unitarian minister, and many of the speakers were Unitarians and Universalists who called for a new world order in which religions would work together collaboratively, a vision that led to the creation of the International Association for Religious Freedom uh, in 1900 in Boston, uh, which again was uh, formed by Unitarians, Universalists, and members of the Brahma Samaj, the group that I come from. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and the reason for us uh, uh, being so committed to, to interfaith work uh, over more than uh, a century uh, is because we uh, stand in the tradition of uh, the freedom of expression, uh, the free pulpit and the free pew, uh, which uh, asserts that uh, a minister or a lay person must be uh, free to express uh, their values without restrictions. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, and so you know, free speech uh, and and freedom of expression is is essential to us uh, because uh, it is with free speech uh, we believe uh, we as a religious movement as well as other other faith traditions as well as uh, in civic society were able to challenge uh, limitations our government put on the possibilities for the quality of life of people uh, whom it had uh, labeled as uh, somehow less than human. Uh, in in the past, uh, like African Americans, like women, and of course, uh, gay and lesbian people. Mm -hmm. Uh, But at the same time, you know, we also recognize that uh, the quest for free speech is the recognition that others must also have the same right, uh, that it's not a one-way street, Mm -hmm. and and, uh, that it's not a good excuse for acceptance of lies, uh, for being destructive, of uh, community values or inciting violence against others, uh, which is why one of our principles uh, talks about uh, affirming and promoting a free and responsible search for mm-hmm. truth and meaning. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, we are also held accountable by another spiritual com- uh, commitment, which is to create a world community with peace, liberty, and justice for all. Uh, which uh, all of which guide our our work and uh, and another principle that uh, really holds us not only accountable but also impels us to be engaged in the community is our first principle which affirms and promotes the inherent worth and dignity of every person mm-hmm. and you also mentioned at the beginning of the program that there's a difference between hate speech and free speech you know yes. uh, having freedom to talk and to express yourself and express your ideas is not the same as having freedom to slander or libel or attack others. Uh, this right. is a very, very important point as well. I don't know if you wanna. I think I want think it was uh, yeah. it was Stephen Leacock uh, who said, uh, uh, "My liberty ends where the other person's nose begins." <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and and to me, that's that's uh, c- c- really what what uh, you know free speech means. And and again, you know, there's a difference between free freedom and license. And I think there's. Uh, 
confusion around that and people confuse uh, license for freedom and therefore uh, f say whatever they wish uh, to say in in whatever way that uh, in turn impacts uh, mm -hmm. both the fabric of the community that we're seeking to create as well as uh, you know the, the lives of people in, in mm -hmm. ways that uh, is, is hurtful and harmful. Absolutely, this is a very important point, you know, that there is this, you know, uh, fine line, if you will, that divides or separates uh, freedom of speech, freedom to express yourself, express your thoughts, ideas, and beliefs, and actually the uh, stepping over uh, other people's rights and liberties, which is a very important point. So we're going to visit the regulation of, of speech after this commercial break. Stay tuned, please. Ziad Brand. Quality products from our family to yours. Ziad Brothers Importing offers the finest quality products, including brands like Sultan, Kraft, Nestle, Hook, Rico Picon, Donna, and many more. Ask your retailer to carry these fine products because you deserve the very best. For more information, visit our website at www.ziad.com. That's www.ziad.com. Ziad, quality products from our family to yours. مؤسسة الحياة للإغاثة والتنمية في مدينة ساوثفيلد في ولاية ميشيغان، المؤسسة الرائدة في العمل الإغاثي والإنساني، مؤسسة الحياة ومنذ 20 سنة تقدم العون للفقراء والمحتاجين والمتضررين بسبب الكوارث الطبيعية أو الحروب في شتى أنحاء العالم. كما تقوم مؤسسة الحياة بكفالة الأيتام والعوائل الفقيرة وحفر آبار المياه في مناطق الحاجة وأيضا تقوم مؤسسة الحياة بتزويد المشافي والمستوصفات الصحية بالأدوية والمعدات الطبية وإنشاء مدارس وعيادات طبية في أقطار عديدة من العالم مؤسسة الحياة مرخصة للعمل في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية وجميع التبرعات معافاة من الضرائب اتصلوا بمؤسسة الحياة للإغاثة والتنمية على رقم الهاتف المجاني 1-800-827-3543 أو زوروا موقعهم الإلكتروني على www.lifeusa.org This is Dr. Sahar Tamid. Join me on the third Friday of each month at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. be discussing some of the most important current political, economic, and social issues in my program, The Bridge, on Radio Baladi, on America's Voice of the Arab, WNDK 690 AM, and WGNV 700 AM. Welcome back to the show, everybody. This is your host, Dr. Sahar Kamis, and with me this morning are three distinguished leaders from the interfaith community, Rabbi David Schneer, Reverend Abby Janamanchi, and Imam Haytham Yunus, discussing the important topic of the importance of being united against hate speech. And right before the commercial break, we were talking about the regulation of hate speech. Some countries in the world, uh, some countries in Europe, for example, in Canada, have taken legal action to actually consider hate speech illegal and to ban it from the legal perspective. Uh, you know, I want to just get some thoughts from my distinguished guests this morning on uh, their opinion on this particular issue and what other strategies could be used in order to combat or fight hate speech. Reverend, uh, Reverend Rob, uh, Abby, if you might give us uh, your thoughts on this uh, quickly, please. Uh, I'm... Uh not sure if I would uh, uh, go as far as uh, writing something into the Constitution that would uh, uh, prohibit uh, free speech, even uh, you know, from from a legal st standpoint, even if that means it is it is hate speech. Uh, it's just that because the First Amendment, uh, as it stands, has specific legal categories of exceptions. Uh, for example. Uh, if, if, uh, you know, if there, if it, if something advocates violence or a captive audience, and I'm, you know, quoting from the First Amendment Center's, uh, website here, uh, if, if it is child pornography or a violation of copyrighted expression, false statements, fighting words, fraud, 
interference with someone else's fundamental right, obscenity, private property, trade secrets, and truth threats, mm -hmm. uh, all of that go against uh, uh, the, the, uh, the spirit of the First Amendment. Uh, so I feel hate speech that way uh, is already uh, uh, considered to be a violation of the First Amendment. So I don't really see the need for an explicit... Uh, um, uh, prohibition uh, in that mm -hmm. sense. So that that's just where I am with it. Mm -hmm. Rabbi David Schneer, if you uh, can give us your thoughts on this issue, please. Um, I, I agree uh, with with Reverend a Abby. I I, I think uh, it would be really uh, really difficult and um, uh, to 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 create some some uh, re regulation uh, here. I I think the the more important thing is how do we foster internal regulation of mm -hmm. ourselves um, within our own communities um, uh, within the the media um, there needs to be a stronger uh, moral voice mm -hmm. a voice of conscience uh, out there um, mm -hmm. that that helps uh, to guide um, civility in in our conversations uh, in in the media in the in of all you know throughout this country and um so that how does that happen how do how does that internal regulation you know take place that's I, for me that's the that's the bigger question and and i know that when we do things like um like i've been invited over the past number of years to iftars mm -hmm. um i mean that, that, that those invitations are precious uh, mm -hmm. we've had um uh, members of the Muslim community to our high holiday services and and to our seders and um, last year uh, uh, Hedya who is one of the leaders um, uh, the, the Muslim community here in uh, Montgomery County uh, spoke at our high holiday services um, that kind of you know that changes things and that's the internal regulation that we all need to encourage around the country to to get involved legally would open up a Pandora's box, and um, I'd be very concerned about, about that. We have to counter mm -hmm. counter um, prejudicial language and hateful hateful language mm -hmm. um, in these other ways. Very good, thank you. And Imam Haitham Yunus, if I can get your thoughts on this, please. Oh yeah, of course. I I fully agree. It's a matter of education and, and especially dialogue. And I think that um, uh, Rabbi uh, David said it well when he said, you know, you. You meet the other person, you put a human face on the other, and, and mm -hmm. I think that, that that's essential. But as far as, you know, legislation, you know, how, how could you uh, possibly do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, in, if you were in Europe or in Canada, certain forms of hate speech would be considered banned, would be considered illegal, but here in the U.S., under the, you know, the First Amendment to the Constitution, there are certain protections that would make it hard to actually, um, you know, ban legally certain forms of speech, even if they uh, include sometimes what you describe as hate speech. But it seems to me that the three of you are on board with the importance of, you know, what uh, Rabbi David called internal regulation and also the work within the interfaith community to bring about better understanding of the other and to build stronger bridges of, of uh, coexistence and tolerance rather than uh, taking the legal route. Uh, uh, Imam Haisam, would you like to talk a little bit more about this or give us your thoughts on it? Um, well... You know, uh, you know. Again, it's it's a little bit difficult to get people out of their shell, obviously, especially when there's, you know, fear involved. Fear is a very basic motivating factor, and um, but I think that an effort has to be made, and it has to be across the board. You know, just because we happen to be the uh, you know the, the group that's that's under attack these days, um, you know, we shouldn't be singled out, or we should we shouldn't be focused on as if we're, you know, a special uh, special case. I think that we have to just, you know, uh, attack fear and, and hate across the board you mm -hmm. know, and just, just get people to, to dialogue. I really think that, you know, actually meeting people from the other group mm -hmm. is very important. Absolutely. Well, that's why initiatives like JID, the Jewish Islamic Dialogue Society of Washington, D.C., uh, initiatives like that and other initiatives uh, in the area are very important to bring about this personal 
uh, you know, communication with the other and, and building bridges of understanding. I did ask, uh, I asked Imam Haitham earlier about the uh, two different options that some Muslims take. Some of them decide to act out and speak up against such uh, hate uh, incidents, while others prefer to just let it go and not act uh, according to it in, all, in the hope that it would just go away. Rabbi David, I want to get your thoughts on this. Uh, what is the danger, what is the uh, problem that can happen if people decide just to let it go and not do anything about it? Well, uh, it'll just get worse. Um, if people feel they can uh, get a, you know, if, if this is not countered, you know, through um, all these efforts that we've been mentioning, um, and then, you know, these, uh, that voice will be heard and, uh, and, and people who are um, susceptible, who, who, who feel insecure, will be drawn to that, to that voice. And it can only increase um, the, the problems that, that we've been uh, experiencing. And not just here, but uh, around the world. Um, you know, so the more we do to, again, it comes back to creating, I mean, why can't Homeland Security spend mm -hmm. some of the millions and millions of dollars that it gets, mm -hmm. you know, on this kind of work? You know, mm -hmm. what, you know, JIDS is a small organization. There should be a JIDS in every community throughout, mm -hmm. uh, throughout this country. You know, why? Why isn't there? You know, mm -hmm. because, partly because of the will, because uh, this, this government is not putting its money, you know, behind these kinds of efforts. Every person in Congress, every staff person should receive an education, you know, in what these, uh, these, these religions are about, you know, in their, even in their various interpretations. Mm -hmm. um, I know Hedja, actually, uh, one of our leaders, has been uh, doing that in, 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 a, in a very limited way. Mm -hmm. uh, this needs to be expanded. Um, and I would say that we, as an interfaith community, need to take, you know, this cause to uh, to, um, to to those agencies agencies in the government that um, are, are, are serious about creating a more peaceful society. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I totally agree with you. And Reverend Abby, uh, if you can also uh, comment on this particular point, the danger of not taking action or not doing anything when uh, you know hate speech or hateful acts actually take place. Yes, uh, you know, uh, when, when the Imam was talking about uh, fear, uh, you know, I was reminded of what Dr. King once said, that uh, fear is uh, an elemental alarm system uh, which uh, warns us of approaching dangers, uh, but without which uh, humanity could not have survived. Uh, and, and so he was talking about our ability to grow and to create and, and actually make uh, deeper connections by working our way through our fears. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in that sense, he was saying fear is normal and necessary for human growth. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but going back to uh, what you just asked, you mm -hmm. know, uh, there's been an effort for many years now to create a department of peace mm -hmm. in our country. You know, of course, it's been uh, dismissed as, uh, as uh, you know, liberal speak and, and that somehow, you know, it's, it's not in keeping with uh, the safety and security of our nation. But, but the rabbi is absolutely right. You know, we need to be investing not just human resources, but some mm -hmm. of our material resources to strengthen the fabric of our community and promote ways in which people can come together, mm -hmm. uh, not only learning about each other, but, but celebrating what they have in common and, and to, uh, you know, use the, plural, the pluralistic values uh, that, that undergird our society and and uh, use that as a model and that is why i feel you know we have pretty good laws and and uh, uh and rules that guide our our being a a civic and free society so uh it's it's a matter of how we apply them and how we guide our our work together that that will determine how we can be uh not only a peaceful nation but a model for the world Absolutely. And on this positive note, I would like very much to thank the three of you, Rabbi David Schneer, uh, Reverend Abby Janamanchi, and Imam Haytham Yunus, not just for joining us today as distinguished guests, but also for all the valuable work that you have been doing in the interfaith community to promote love, unity, coexistence, and to fight discrimination and hatred and hate speech. Thank you all very much. Thank and thank listeners this morning as well. Thank you. This is your host, Dr. Sahar Kamis. Thank you all very much.